with the draft proofing system, sealing all those gaps with weather proofing and the draft proofing, etc. Uh, it's actually been tested by the BBA uh, to improve a non weather strip window to a weather strip after we've finished by 30%. So that's, that makes that window 30% more efficient. So you can imagine a house full of Georgian windows, stopping all the drafts and the rattles. One, you can get a good night's sleep, and, and two, you get a warmer, warmer house. Uh, if we go on to some of the other performance upgrades, we, we're very constrained in what, or clients are very constrained in what they can do. So if I, if I can elaborate a bit more, so a listed building, you have a very, very small window, excuse the pun, to work to. You've got certain criteria to try and save every part of that window, the aesthetics, etc., 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 the configuration, the material. So you've got very limited you can do. So the draft proofing really suits that window for a listed building well. If you go on to conservation areas, you, you, the, the rules get laxed a bit, but it depends on what conservation area you're in. It does differ from area to area, area and on planning control or listed building, uh, conservation officers consent of what you can do. But in most cases now, what we can see and what we try and encourage is people not to fully take out their windows. Um, there's a number of reasons for this is some of the timber uh, that was used years, years ago, you cannot get now. It's, it's usually timber windows, nine times out of 10 are built out of a pitch pine. Pitch pine is, although it is a softwood, it's a slow growing softwood. And if you look at the grain of it, it's very tightly grain and it's very oily. That's why you can understand it's very good for our climates. However, it is a living wood. Unless it's maintained, it will have a, a lower than expected life expectancy. So what we can do with one of the performance upgrades in, on, in a conservation area or other older buildings with um, sash windows is we can replace the sashes in the existing boxes with new heritage slim sightline double glaze sashes. So what we are able to do then is maintain the frame and the, all the woodwork or plaster work that may be behind that internally and aesthetically get a nice looking window but save the aesthetics of, of the house or the, or the property. Historically with um, box sash windows, uh, prior or prior to 1709, you, you find that the windows are built flush with the brickwork and then they're finished off with like a, an architrave that goes around the outside of the window. However, post 1709, you used to see them set back about four inches and then filled up, uh, finished off with like a, a molding, like a Scotia molding that goes around it, sealing it to the, the frame to the brickwork. However, 1774, there was a building regulation that came into place that made these windows go into check, which means it goes in behind the face of the external, external brickwork. And the reason for that, it was to take the timber away from the external, and it was to do with the Great Fire of London of, of 1666. So you can see if you're putting a window in check, and so that means it goes in from inside up to the external brickwork, anything you put in after that, so any ornate woodwork, shutters, panelling, plasterwork, etc., etc., etc will have to be removed to get that whole box out. So you can see the benefit of retaining a box in situ if it's not gone rotten and then putting new sashes in it if you're allowed to do so. So the performance upgrade then for a customer 
is the double glaze unit plus the draft seal. So we can draft seal it exactly like a listed building, but because it's a conservation area, we can upgrade it with similar looking uh, slim heritage double glaze sashes. We can copy the horn detail. The only bit that would, would change and becomes uh, a little bit of an issue is the glazing bar detail on a Georgian sash window is normally 16 to 18 mil, so it's very thin. If we're introducing 21st century products into maybe an 18th century window, something's got to give. So with a double glazed unit, you've got a, it's a sandwich effect. You've got two bits of glass that has a, a bar that goes around it, then it's hermetically sealed or a hot seal, but some way, shape or form it's sealed. So that increases your sight line. So on a, a single pane of glass, you have, you've not got that to worry about. So you've got smaller rebates for your glazing bar. So if we increase that sight line with a double glazed unit, we have to increase that rebate. So that takes your glazing bar from around 16 to 18 mil to 22 to 24 mil. So aesthetically, it has a little bit of uh, an effect, but not too much of an effect that it's going to um, look ugly. So to verify all these uh, improvements that the draft proof, the Ventrola draft proofing system has on a window, we had to have them tested and verified. So we had them tested by the BBA for the U value, so that's the air permeability. Um, then we had uh, Ogly Conservation uh, check it for, obviously if we're, we're stopping the drafts, it has an impact on the air changes. Um, then we had Hans Tucker uh, if we're filling all the gaps with draft proofing system, it actually does help with the sound. So in, in all intents and purposes, the draft proofing system st stops noise to a certain extent by eight to 10 decibels, which is termed significant, however, can be subjective because noise affects people in different ways. Uh, the British Board of Agreement uh, prove that a window without draft proofing and a window with draft proofing improved it by 30%, hence the improvement of the U values. And the air changes were down to 0.4 air changes per hour. So, you know, these, these are facts to, to verify the Ventrola draft proofing system. Mm -hmm.